If your design portfolio has a bunch of grey Figma screens just because someone once told you, hey, you need to add some wireframes, this video is for you. Most people think wireframes are an essential ingredient of UX case study, completely missing their actual purpose. They force fit them into their case studies and when asked even a surface level question about the wireframes they have shown, they stumble. It's clear they did it without fully understanding what wireframes are all about. Today, we're going to bust some myths, use some nostalgic analogies, and really understand what wireframes actually are and what they are not. Trust me, I dug deep into YouTube and couldn't find even a single video that does justice in explaining what wireframes truly are. So I thought of making one. So please watch this video till the end because this is the only video you will ever need to understand what wireframes are about. So let's start with the basics. So what exactly is a wireframe and what is it not? Let's begin with some of the definitions. A wireframe is a simplified, low-fidelity representation of your design. Think of it as a blueprint of a building. It outlines a structure without getting into the details. In short, it's the high-level visual plan of your user interface where you are planning the broader structure of a particular page. We'll get into more details of it. But before we talk more about wireframing, I want you to check out an awesome learning resource after you have finished watching this video. Simply Learn is a global leader in digital skills training with courses and programs designed and delivered by world-renowned universities, top corporations, and leading industry bodies via live online classes in everything from generative AI and data science to digital marketing, software development, and yes, even design. The platform is reviewed and recommended by Forbes, and it has high ratings on platforms like Trustpilot and Course Report. The course I would recommend is their advanced certification in UI UX design in partnership with IIIT Bangalore. In this, you will master UX design and learn 20 plus core skills and get hands-on experience with over 21 must-known tools for designers like Figma, Notion, Maze, Whimsical, Wizard, and more. You also get to work through 55 plus course-wide activities, discussions, and case studies, making the entire experience super immersive and practical, including topics like human-computer interaction and even building your own AR and VR prototypes. Plus, there are live mentor-led sessions from experienced designers and industry experts. The course is best suited for freshers, aspiring designers, working professionals from any background, or even existing designers who want a formal certification. So even if you're just getting started or looking to switch careers, this is built for you. You will need a graduation or diploma with at least 50%, and while one year of work experience is preferred, it's not mandatory. This is a great career focus course with a program completion certificate backed by a leading institution. If you're serious about becoming a professional designer in 2025, this is where you start. Check out the program from the link in the description. Let's get back to the video now. All right, what a wireframe is not. It's not a polished design or the final product. It's not even an add-on ingredient in your case study that'll get you brownie points. It's not meant to impress with looks. Instead, it's meant to communicate ideas and facilitate discussions. I just mentioned that wireframes are low-fidelity representation of your design, but they aren't just low-color gray versions of your final UI. I mean, yes, they sometimes can look like that, but that's not what makes them wireframes. One of the closest analogies I can think of is the rough sheet we all use in our math exams. Remember that? You'd use a rough sheet for calculations, but for more serious problems and exams, you do more than just crunch numbers. You draw diagrams, strategize, try out different approaches. As an engineering student, I extensively use those rough sheets for physics as well. Wireframes serve similar purpose in design. They like your scratch pad for ideas. A wireframe can be as rough as a whiteboard scribble or a quick napkin sketch. They can be quick, messy, and ugly. Their value lies in helping you think clearly, not in looking tidy. Funnily enough, the deeply discussed wireframes are often the ugliest ones. They are full of scribbles, strike throughs, reworked, overwritten, patched up, random arrows, and all kind of chaos. And that's the point, because that's how humans think. Thinking is not a clear path from A to B. It's messy. The idea is to let the wireframes be as ugly and messy as possible. But after that, your thoughts and direction should be clear and structured. It's all about structuring your thoughts and not presentation. Wireframes have big bold boxes without any details, text, or icons inside them. Ever wondered why? This is to help you focus on the big things first. Imagine you're setting up your living room. You don't start by deciding a flower vase for the coffee table. First, you sketch the room's outline, then you place the big stuff, the sofa, the TV, the dining table, or maybe even a bookshelf. Once that's done, you check how much space is left. Maybe now you can fit in a medium-sized coffee table. And then if there is still room, you might add a flower vase on top of it. Wireframes work the same way. You start by figuring out broad layout where the major blocks of content will go. Only after that, you get into the smaller stuff like icons, copy, and colors. Now you might ask, what's the problem if I start with a flower vase? I mean, it's a nice vase, right? Sure, let's try that. You pick the perfect flower vase first, and then you look for a coffee table that matches it in size and style. Once that's done, you place both of them in the room 
and suddenly realize you don't have enough space left for the sofa. Now that's a problem because without a sofa, what's the point of having a coffee table? You're planned around the small stuff and ended up compromising on the essentials. That's exactly what happens in design too. When you start focusing on the smaller UI elements before figuring out the overall layout and flow, you risk running into dead ends. Wireframes with their big bold boxes force you to get the structure right first so that rest can fall in place naturally. Okay, but why are wireframes so boring looking? Why gray? Here's why. When you are in the problem solving zone, beauty can be a distraction. Full color, beautiful UIs can trick your brain into thinking something works, even when it doesn't. Gray, monochrome wireframes strip away that illusion. It keeps you focused on what matters, which is function and layout and flow. It's very risky to fall in love with your design too early. That's like marrying someone right after one coffee because they had nice shoes. It's risky. Wireframes can also exist at different levels of fidelity. At the low end, you have the pencils, sketches, whiteboard scribbles that we just spoke about. Then comes the mid fidelity ones, the gray and the white layouts on tools like Figma. These are usually made once there is some clarity and structure to your ideas. And it's these mid fidelity wireframes that are most misunderstood and misused. People add them to case studies just because they look designy without really knowing why they exist or what role they played in the process. What makes a wireframe a wireframe isn't just the tool, it's the intent. It's about exploring the structure and logic and not the visuals. When adding wireframes to your case study, make sure they earn their place. Use them to show your thought process, how you planned layouts, made functional decisions, and evolve your ideas. Highlight key iterations to demonstrate how your design improved over time. If a wireframe helped you solve a specific user problem, call that out. But don't just drop a bunch of gray screens and call it a day. Always provide context. Explain why a certain approach made sense and how it shaped the final output. And most importantly, only include wireframes that add value to your story and not everything. Wireframes should support your narrative, not just sit there as a formality. Even though wireframes can vary in fidelity, they're still nowhere close to your final UI. And here's another mistake I have seen far too often, not just by beginners, but by experienced designers too. They use wireframe prototypes for user testing. Please don't do that. Yes, prototypes are meant to be quick, but that doesn't mean they should be rough sketches or gray boxes. They are meant to be quicker than building a real app, not so rough that users can't even make sense of them. Wireframes are like skeletons of your design, and the truth is most users are not used to talking to skeletons. If you ask someone to test a wireframe prototype, sure, they'll click around and give you feedback, but the insights you get won't be fully reliable because they are reacting to something unfamiliar and incomplete. You won't know if it's their confusion is with the experience or just the fact that they're staring at a bunch of boxes. Using wireframes for user testing is like sending a skeleton to see how people react to strangers. You're not testing interactions, you're scaring them off. Wireframes are great for internal thinking and planning though, and feedback within your team. Your PMs, designers and engineers, they get it. But when it comes to actual users, you need to show something that feels almost real. That's when you get real, honest, useful insights. And that was it. Everything you needed to know about wireframing. From knowing what not to do to doing the right way. Here's everything that we discussed. Screenshot this frame for later reference. Check out this video for a full guide to chat GPT image generation and this video to become a 10x better designer. This is Sapta signing off. See you all in the next one.